Low back pain and sciatica are incredibly common and extremely difficult to treat. People suffering from back pain are often desperate to look for treatments that relieve pain. So in this video, I'm going over the latest clinical trial data looking at whether steroid injections or epidural injections work. I'm also going to answer the question, does PRP work for low back pain and sciatica? Let's get started. Now, if this is the first time you're watching one of my videos, my goal is to help each and every one of you live an active and healthy lifestyle. So if that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing to my channel. Low back pain is extremely common with some studies suggesting up to 25% of the US population reporting low back pain at least once in the prior three months. Low back pain is also a leading global cause of years lived with disability. So it makes sense that clinicians are always looking for new and better treatment options for such a disabling condition. Now for the longest time, the go-to non-surgical treatment option for chronic low back pain that has not responded to exercise therapy and medication management has has been an epidural steroid injection. But now there is more data coming out about the potential long-term side effects of corticosteroid injections. Specifically, when steroids are injected into joints, they can degrade articular cartilage and cause worsening arthritis. So researchers are revisiting whether epidural corticosteroid injections truly help. One of the best databases available for evidence-based medicine comes from the Cochrane Library. Their aim is to make the results of well-conducted controlled trials available for a variety of medical conditions. They published their review article two years ago titled Epidural Corticosteroid Injections for Lumbosacral Radicular Pain. According to the review, the goal of epidural corticosteroid injections is to deliver medication into the epidural space with the aim of reducing the local inflammatory process and consequentially relieving the symptoms of lumbosacral radicular pain. This radicular pain is also what we call sciatica or pain that shoots down from the back, down the hips, and into the leg. They included 25 clinical trials which compared epidural steroid injections to placebo injections and after their analysis they report that epidural steroid injections were probably slightly more effective compared to placebo in reducing leg pain and disability at short-term follow-up. But the authors go on to conclude that the available evidence still provides only limited support for the use of epidural steroid injections in people with lumbosacral radicular pain as the treatment effects are small, mainly evident at short-term follow-up, and may not be considered clinically important by patients and clinicians. And for something that has been long touted as an excellent treatment option, corticosteroid injections may not provide as much relief as we think. Notice the author's choice of words here, and let's read between the lines. They say steroids are probably and slightly more effective, and that whatever differences between steroid and placebo may not even be considered clinically important because the effects are so small. And this is exactly why clinicians are looking for other options. We've known now that corticosteroids provide only small short short-term relief? Can we find anything else that has more of a sustained response? PRP injections work incredibly well for knee arthritis in providing short-term and sustained long-term relief. So does PRP work for low back pain and sciatica? This study was a randomized double-blind controlled study comparing PRP injection to epidural steroid injection. Patients were randomized into either getting PRP or steroid injection and then evaluated at one month, three months, and six months post-injection. Researchers were looking at pain levels and quality of life at these follow-up time points. They found that at one month, patients who got the steroid injection had better pain reduction when compared to the PRP group. However, the authors found that the pain and quality of life scores were much better in the PRP group at three months and six months follow-up. Let's look at another study. This study compared PRP injection to steroid injection for the treatment of lumbar facet joint syndrome. They too evaluated patients up to six months after treatment and compared pain and patient satisfaction. Just like in the other study, these authors found that the steroid injection group had better pain levels at one month when compared to the PRP group. But both pain and patient satisfaction were much better in the PRP group at three months and six months follow-up. Now let's 
look at a study for the sacroiliac joint, another common problem in those suffering from low back pain. This study compared PRP injection to steroid injection for the treatment of SI joint dysfunction. They followed patients out to three months and compared pain and functional limitations. They found that, again, steroid injections had a temporary improvement in pain that was not sustained. They state that the intensity of pain was significantly lower in the PRP group at six weeks and three months when compared to the steroid group. When looking at functional improvements, the steroid group improved initially for up to four weeks, but deteriorated further at three months, while scores for the PRP group continue to improve up to three months. The results from these clinical trials are consistent with what we have seen when we compare PRP to steroid injections for other conditions such as tennis elbow, plantar fasciitis, gluteal tendinopathy, and knee arthritis. Steroids work fast and then they wear off. PRP has much more sustained effect on long-term pain and quality of life. Now it's important to point out that these are only three smaller trials. The problem is there are just not that many clinical trials looking at the use of PRP for low back pain. So until more trials are done and then subsequent systematic reviews and meta-analysis are performed, we won't truly know if PRP works for low back pain or sciatica. With that said, if you have chronic low back pain and epidural steroid injections has only provided short-term relief or perhaps has not even provided any relief, then a PRP injection seems like a safe and potentially great option to try. Lastly, if you're interested in learning more about PRP, check out my video where I answer some of the most common questions that I get about platelet-rich plasma. Thanks for watching.